Hello and welcome to yet another video on the method of undetermined coefficients. In this video I'm going to talk about a complication that comes up with other functions aside from the exponentials uh, and that is that we have to often deal with entire families of functions. And so let's consider the example here, y double prime minus 4y equal cos of 2t. Now I won't go through the solution of the homogeneous equation, I'll leave that to you to do as an exercise. Let's just jump straight to an ansatz motivated by what we did in uh, previous examples so far. And uh, let me just, let me just, uh, I should put it over here on the side. When you go through the homogeneous case, you actually get e to the 2t and e to the minus 2t. So that's important because we need to check that these guys do not appear on the right hand side because if they did we would have to deal with that with a t pre-multiplying when we make our um, yp guess. So instead I'm pretty confident that this is a reasonable guess and so I'm going to take uh, well here I'm going to just take two derivatives right off the bat and I'm going to get minus 4a cosine of 2t. Those two chain rules give me the 4s and the minus sign comes from the cosine to sine derivative in there. Okay, so uh, when I add these together as per the equation, I get minus 4a cosine 2t. And then I subtract from that minus 4a cosine 2t, where the first one comes from the wide p. Oh, there's a double prime on there. So the first one comes from this expression here, and this one comes from the 4y here, with a minus sign in front in the equation. Okay, so, uh, so that is minus 8a cosine 2t, and I want to, that's what, so this is yp double prime minus 4yp, and that's equal to this, which is equal to that, and I would like it to be equal to cosine of 2t. So if I choose a to be minus 1 8 we should get our answer. So we have a y p of t in this case is equal to uh, minus 1 over 8 cosine of 2t. Okay, that's good. Now let's see if this works in general. So uh, slightly more complicated equation. Let's put in a y prime plus, sorry, a y double prime plus y prime minus 4y. And again, st stick with the same right hand side. And here again, we should look for the homogeneous solution, but I'm going to do use a simple trick, which is to observe that the characteristic equation will have a b term in there, like in the a, a squared or a r squared plus b r plus c, there'll be a non-zero b, and that means that the homogeneous solutions will have exponential terms multiplying a cosine if there is if there is complex parts to it. So we we can be sure that this does not conflict with it because there's no exponential in this cosine term. Okay, so I'll skip over that calculation of the homogeneous because we can be sure we're not Need to, we don't need to worry about it when we guess our yp of t. And so I'm going to just guess, as I have before, that it's a cos 2t. And now this is not going to work out, but I'm doing this anyway because it's a great way to learn the, um, the right way to choose your yps just by seeing what fails. Okay, so let's take two derivatives of this guess. Actually, we're going to have to do both. So let's do one derivative first, and I get minus 2a sine 2t. And then a second derivative, yp double prime, and I get here four minus 4a cosine 2t. And when I plug those in, I get yp double prime plus yp prime minus 4yp is going to be equal to minus 4a cos 2t plus, oh, no, minus 2a sine 2t and then minus 4 times a, sorry, times yp, which is a cos 2t. 
And so let's put some things together there. We have a minus 8a cosine 2t minus 2a sine 2t. And we'd like that to equal the cosine of 2t. Uh, well, so cosine and sine are independent functions, so we can match this one to this one, but because of that independence, there's no way of handling both of these at the same time. So maybe we can get partway there with a equal minus 1 over 8, but if we choose a equal minus 1 over 8, that messes up this, and we're never going to get rid of that sine term, which should not be in here. And so obviously we've missed something. And the point here is that because we have derivatives that appear now, so before in the first equation, we had two derivatives of y and no derivative of y. And it just so happens because of the way the cosine derivatives work, no derivatives leaves me with only cosines in that expression. And two derivatives also leaves me with only cosines in the expression. So we didn't have this problem of a sine term cropping up in this first example, but now we do because we have some first derivatives appearing in there. And that's why I mentioned earlier that this method here, or this guess for the right-hand side, is going to fail for us. And, uh, and now we see why it fails. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix that and then try again with a yp of t. And now I'm going to include an a cosine 2t, and we'll be able to match that to the cosine term that emerges plus b sine 2t. And that one we're going to be able to match to the sine term that emerges. Okay, so now we have to do some calculations. So we take a first derivative and we get minus 2a sine 2t plus 2b cosine 2t. And we take another derivative, y double prime, and we get here another 2 comes out, so it's minus 4a cosine 2t. And on this one, we get a minus sign and a 2, so we get 4b sine 2t. And now taking these and plugging them back into the equation, we're going to have yp double prime plus yp prime minus 4y is equal to, and I'm going to stack them up and group them so that it's easier to add them after. So I have here the y double prime term, no coefficient in front, so it's just minus 4a cosine 2t. And then I have a minus 4b sine 2t. Then on the next line, when I add in my y prime term, I'm going to order it so that I have the cosine term first, so I'll put this one first, and I'm going to have plus 2b cosine 2t and minus 2a sine 2t. And then in the last one, I have to include this one with a minus 4 coefficient. And so we get uh, the cosine term is the first one, minus 4a cosine 2t. And then plus, no, minus 4 times b, minus 4b sine 2t. And so now when we add these up, you can see that we're going to get 2b minus 8a times cosine 2t minus, they all have minuses in front, so it's a little easier to do it that way, 8b plus 2a sine 2t. Now we want all of this to equal cosine of 2t, that's the right-hand side of my original differential equation over here. So what do we need to do? We have to make sure that this is equal to 1 and this is equal to 0. So let's do the equal 0 one first. We get 8b plus, plus 2a equals 0. So we get that a has to be minus 4 times b. And then we can plug that into this equation over here, which is 2b minus 8a, but we know that a now is minus 4b, and that has to be equal to 1. So here we get minus 32 plus 2 is minus 30, so we get that b is equal to 
minus 1 over 30. Sorry, I missed a minus sign there, so let me take take that back a step. Okay, so we have that a is equal to minus 4b, and then we have 2, oops, 2b minus 8, and then a is minus 4b, so let's put that right in, and that has to be equal to 1. Now, the minus and minus give me a plus, and I have 32b, and another 2b is 34b, so 34b equal 1 means that b must be equal to 1 over 34. And that means that a is going to be minus 4 times that. So that's minus 4 over 34, which is minus 2 over 17. OK, so I just made a little bit more space down there. And now we can write out the, uh, the yp that we got. So we have the particular solution to this inhomogeneous equation is going to be yp is now the a is minus 2 over 17 times the cosine of 2b, uh, 2t plus 1 over 34 times the sine of 2t. And so this is what I meant by having to deal with families. We originally started with a differential equation that had only the cosine of 2t, but our particular solution needed to have what I'll refer to as the entire family associated with cosine of 2t, and how do we determine what that family is? Well, the cosine has a derivative that's sine, so if we have a cosine in there, we'll have to include a sine function as well. And if there were other functions that appeared as you take more and more derivatives, we'd actually have to include all of those as well in the whole family. Fortunately, the cosine family and the sine family, they close after just two, so this one only needs two but I'll do another video in a moment in which you can see that the um, functions can become uh, more complicated, the families can get larger, and we'll try and classify a full collection that we'll focus on in this course.